Well, I'm Dr. Ronald W. Satz, founder and chair of the International Society of Unified Science. And this is part six, the final part of my paper, Theory of Unit Space Time and Displacements from Unit Space Time, Material and Cosmic Photons, Subatoms, and Atoms. We're on page 86 of the paper. You can see uh, <clears throat> the references here. This is all of Larson's books here. My book is reference nine, and then some of my uh, papers. Some more references on the next page here. You can see that I've been working on this theory for decades, actually. Again, some more references, including quite a few references to the conventional literature. Anybody working in theoretical physics, no matter what the paradigm, has to be familiar with the conventional wisdom, even if one disagrees with it. So I've made a point of studying uh, all these uh, relatively famous individuals, such as Penrose and uh, Professor Lang, Professor Shu. And here's some more. Uh, Carol Mossy, that's the most popular college textbook now on uh, astrophysics. Sixty-two references in this paper. Now, Appendix 1, <clears throat> Neutrino Magnetic Ionization Level. Isotopes are not at the same abundance throughout the universe despite what conventional theory says. Let I equal neutrino magnetic ionization level, then I equal zero for newly formed globular clusters in intergalactic space, all atoms have mass two times Z only, where Z, of course, is the atomic number. Note that in the reciprocal system, globular clusters are young, not old. I equals one is for spiral galaxies like the Milky Way, at our current epoch, atoms have mass two times e plus g. I equals two for large end of life toroidal galaxies. Atoms have mass two times z uh, plus g. Now, but what is g? G is the number of rotational vibrational mass in units of AMU. Notice that it's an AMU, which is really the natural unit, not U. But M sub R equal rotational mass in terms of atomic number, total of equivalent number of electric rotational displacements in units of AMU. Then from reference to page 264, we have <clears throat> G equals I times M sub R squared divided by I sub R, where I sub R is the interregional ratio. And G, of course, again, means gravitational or isotopic charges. This is the midpoint value for isotomic uh, stability. Any mass equaling 236, which is 2 times 118, or higher in our sector of the universe will be radioactive. Here are the plots for I equals 0, 1, and 2. So you can see the difference here. So this is for large spheroidal galaxy. This would be for our Milky Way or generally any spiral. And of course, uh, <laughs> no I still have charges of G equals zero. Okay, now appendix two: periodic tables of the material and cosmic elements and material and cosmic atomic structures. Here's the reciprocal system periodic table of the elements. I first developed this table from my book on the reciprocal system and the serious universe way back in 1971. And nothing's really changed. Let's see if we can zoom in here a bit. Uh, let's see. Let's 
spell like on 50. And move the screen around. And this is a little tricky. Okay, it's a little bit better. <coughs> You can see that yellow uh, means metallic salads, the blue means non-metallic salads, uh, the green means liquids, and the pink means gases. So first we have hydrogen or deuterium as number one. Technically deuterium is really the first actual atomic element. And then you can see the columns and how the numbers increment. And you can see going across the rows, and the rows are labeled exactly. And you can see how the electric displacement increments across the table here. Now this side is the electropositive side. And you slide over, we come to the electronegative side. And you can see how the displacements invert in this other half, they become displacements actually in space rather than in time, which means that the electric rotation is, is a button. Again, it uh, goes all the way down, and then come to the node elements here, this column, and they all have zero electric displacements. So they're not apt to combine with other elements. So that's the reciprocal system periodic table of the elements. Very symmetrical, very nice. Now let's go back to Zoom. Let's go fit visible. Now let's just review the reciprocal system structure of the atom. Let's imagine this photon here. Well, excuse me, Let, let's imagine this, this photon A here and photon B here. So the magnetic axis will be A, and for this side will be magne magnetic axis B, and this will be the electric axis. So let's go over these steps here. <clears throat> a diameter A perpendicular to C, I'll just move this back up. A diameter A perpendicular to C in disk A represents one linear oscillation. And the disk A is the figure generated by rotation of this oscillation around an axis B perpendicular to both A and C. Two. Rotation of the second linear oscillation represented by the diameter B around axis A generates the disk B, small b. Three, disk A may be given a second rotation on axis A, and disk B may be given a second rotation on axis B without interference at any point as long as the rotational speeds are equal. Finally, the whole assembly may be given a rotation around the electric axis C. Principal magnetic rotation two dimensions is designated A. The subordinate magnetic rotation one dimensional is designated B. The electric rotation one dimensional is designated C. Thus we use A hyphen B hyphen C. Now let's go over here to this example. This is titanium. These are displacements 3 hyphen 2, 4, and 3 hyphen 2, 4. And because they're equal, as they are for all the elements, deuterium, we can simplify this to 3 hyphen 2 hyphen 4. Now the rotational frequency is r divided by 2 pi hyphen 2 r over 3 pi hyphen 2 r over 5 pi, where r is the Rydberg frequency, which is 3.288.0575 times 10 to the 15 revolutions per second. The photon frequency equals 2 r cycles per second. 
and you can see this was all pointed out in the 1980. As I've said, I've worked with this theory for decades. All right, now we come to the reciprocal system periodic table of the cosmic elements. And as you might expect, it looks pretty much like what you would, uh, you know, what the material uh, elements look like. So let's uh, just you know, let's use this method. <clears throat> so the cosmic electropositive here, and you can see we have parentheses around it because these are all space displacements. So we start off with cosmic. Material that is the first cosmic, real cosmic element. And you can see the unit commit going across the table. And let's slide across to the other side. And again, then you can see how we increment the magnetic displacement and then decrement the electric displacement all the way to the end column. And the end column here. Cesium, cosmic helium, cosmic neon, etc., are the cosmic noble elements. And all these elements have a mass inverse to those of the material side. Not the negative, but the inverse. And let's go in here and let's get back to our. Let's see. Uh, reciprocal system structure of the cosmic atoms. So let's review this again. We have magnetic axis A, which is photon A. We have magnetic axis B, photon B. And then we have the electric axis, which is vertical. This is disk A, and this is disk B. And we want diameter A perpendicular C, and disk A represents one linear oscillation of the photon. And the disk A is the figure generated by rotation of this oscillation around the axis B, perpendicular to both A and C. Rotation of the second linear oscillation, which is the second photon construction, represented by diameter B, around axis A generates the disk B. Disk A may be given a second rotation on axis A, and disk B may be given a second rotation on axis B without interference at any point as long as rotational speeds are equal. Finally, the whole assembly may be given a rotation around the electric axis C. The principle of magnetic rotation, which is two-dimensional, is designated A. The subordinate magnetic rotation, which is one-dimensional, is designated B. And the electric rotation, one-dimensional, also is designated C. That's C. C. Now, for cosmic titanium, we have parentheses 3, hyphen parentheses 2, and then parentheses 4. Same thing for the second rotation. So we can simplify this to simply be parentheses 3, hyphen parentheses 2, hyphen parentheses 4. In terms of rotational frequency, and you can see that these are considerably higher than the material set, we have 8r over pi, hyphen 8r over pi, hyphen 10r over pi, where again, r is the Ripper frequency, 3.2880575 times 10 to the 15 per second, and the photon frequency is one half one rather than two. Uh, that concludes this paper. Congratulations to you. If you've actually read through this paper and listened and watched me give it, if you understand this paper, then you actually will have you actually have a good understanding of the reciprocal system. And I think you'll agree with me that it supersedes all of the theories out there.
study the reciprocal system and prove it for yourself.